want to remind everyone to visit our website, www.stogiegeeks.com. Go there for all the latest cigar reviews from Tim and Mark Jr., as well as a full listing of all the cigars. Well, most of the cigars that we smoke on a regular basis. And the nice part is you get to see our rating system, um, which it goes from one to five with uh, all variations in between. Keep um, adding some. We keep, ad- we keep adding some, but it's very... Um, concise rating system i would say and speaks to basically whether or not you should buy the cigar how many you should buy what ones you stay away from uh, it's I mean, easy to understand you go to our website you look in the reviews or the show tags you click on the ones that are oasis those are the ones you want to smoke you go to the ones that are box worthy um you can search our website for uh, cigars that you uh, might be thinking of trying or purchasing and you can get our assessment on them i'm not saying our assessment is law Right, mm, that's true. Uh, but very it's objective. our opinion. It's our opinion. It's very uh, much our <clears throat> personal opinions. But um, and I got to say, thank you to Mark Junior. Because I'm very happy to have somebody else to review cigars other than myself. Yes, yes. Because after 50 <clears throat> reviews in the last year, I welcome the help, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> I got one up already. Yep. So this segment, um, <clears throat> we call it the basics. We call it the basics, and I, I think that. Uh, a lot of the Stogie Geeks crew was worried when this suggestion came in that we were going to talk about tips for the new cigar smoker, you know, the top five rookie mistakes kind of thing. Uh, a lot of us were worried that the seasoned cigar smoker was going to be bored. But I think the seasoned cigar smoker is going to listen. You're going to be entertained by this. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, when I was a rookie cigar smoker, I made the same kind of mistake. So I think this is going to appeal to our, our audience. Um, before we get to that, though, very quickly... Uh, Assessment of the E.P. Carrillo Maduro in the uh, Cardinal uh, By the blend. Sumatra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah by I the have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Unanimous decision by the Sumatra. By, I'd say buy a fiver of the Maduro to pair with coffee because yeah. they're good. Yep. And I'd say buy a box or two. They're not the a bad smoke. I need to revisit on a fresh palate. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the Sumatra hands down is the winner if I had to pick a pick. Pick from the two. Yep. So, Mr. Yeah. Tim, what did you light up now? Because uh, we went really long in our first segment, which which is okay. We we always talk about keeping it shorter, but that never comes to fruition. Never seems to happen, yeah. Uh, Tim, what did you light up? Uh, thanks to you, I lit up my Quesada Oktoberfest 2011. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, it's oh, yeah. it's pairing very well with the Scotch. So, yeah, so. yeah, mine is too. Yeah. Uh, so, Stoke, say, what did you light up? I gifted myself a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so wait a second. You still have some of those left? Yeah. Oh. oh no, no, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't more. have any yet. I don't now, have any more. Your pers- I don't have any less. <laughs> yeah. Are those your personal stash? Yes. Or is that okay? Never mind. Yeah. Never okay. mind. Why? Well, if they were for sale, then I'd be no, no calling you tomorrow. No, right? no. But that's the PG where we just talked about the uh, Corona Reserva. Reserva Exclusiva. It's really. With some talking. serious ass age oh, on it. Yeah. You're yeah. talking some good And those things Well, age. we're talking seven, eight years now, right? Oh, all of that. Yeah. And, the, only and, thing, the only thing better, in my opinion, is the Grand Panatello. But. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't I even know if it's those. better, to be honest. I know. It is. It's Robin Peter. And, and, I oh. gave the Grand Panatello equal to that Oh, oh yeah, exactly. But, I like the Grand Panatello better, but... What, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can't so. go wrong. You talk Mark about Jr., what did you light up? Oh. Uh, also, thanks to Paul, I lit up a uh, Viaje Oro Reserva double-edged short. Yes. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Oh, those are so the oral, good. Yeah. First one I've had. I've only ever had the Platino, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, about right this before actually. the show, uh, Stogie Santa and Mark Jr. were furiously working to remove a band from uh, from a cigar, which I lit up. I, I smelled the foot, and I was like, I got to smoke this right now, and that's what I'm smoking. It's very, very good. Yeah. I'm enjoying it uh, very great. much so far. It's going to be interesting what the reveal will be. So at the end of the segment, you'll get the reveal on my unbanded cigar. Wow! <laughs> the swish is sweet. That's a, that's a big Swisher white owl, man. Look at the size that of that thing. That is a peach white owl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep drinking it. Gonna get better. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of uh, peach and uh, dog shit oh. flavor from it. <laughs> oh, who is that guy with the white? Yeah, owl? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You two guys? <laughs> it's kind of sickeningly sweet. Yeah. But, uh, it is yeah. Okay, anyway. Right. I'll listen to this. I have no clue what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. Real um, All right, end the story. Uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> so we're going to talk about, uh, after that, we're going to talk about the basics. Now, I wanted to, so should, we, should we read the, the, the dude's email? Yes. We, yeah, let's stop there. That, that just stop. Why, why not? So Matt, Matt, R, Matt, R, Matt R writes into the show. And uh, Matt R says, I really enjoy your show. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, even though I'm not a cigar smoker at this time or any other smoker for that matter, 
I don't know if I'm uh, the only non-smoker who listens to your show regularly, but I was wondering if you guys could do a segment on how to get into cigar smoking. Just in doing an hour segment or so of research while bored at work one day, here are some of the questions that Matt has for us. Question number one. How do you hold a cigar? I can see the look on your faces already that you have a totally non-serious answer. No, How, not at all. There's a lot of... Both <laughs> it depends well, on the size of that baby. Some no, almond I'm, lube. No, I'm sorry. No. Most sites say not to hold it like a cigarette, but I've seen a lot of people holding a cigar exactly in the same way, so I'm confused. Very, uh, you, you watch Europeans <laughs> like this. Uh, really? Yeah, they do. But they I'm, do. So, yeah, I'm serious. That, but I'm a that, goddamn American, so yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> Mark Jr. <laughs> saying this. <laughs> no, no, no. More like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just look at your wife and figure it out. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. We're not insulting you, by the no, way. We're no, really no, not. No, We're no, just no, having no. some stop, fun. Stop, I, I got to say, in all That's honesty, let me question. start here. Let me start here. I think it's awesome we have a non-cigar smoker. Uh, absolutely. Sure on the Thank stop. you very much, Matt. Matt. Right. Yeah. So, Matt, in all seriousness, if you're interested, okay, We're let's interested. be serious. Let's try. I tell yeah. you what, there's no right or wrong no, way Matt, to hold right. a cigar. It's and there's one of the things that, like, a lot of times people say, well, there's no right or wrong when it comes to cigars. And a lot of times I disagree. I think this is one... I mean, I, okay. I, kinda, I do kind of hold mine like a cigarette. Okay, but I hold, my, I hold mine okay, very... Just stop and take a look. No, Matt, it's a great, great question. It is. It is. There's no... I, I mine is li- I uh, like this. Yeah, I hold mine very dainty. Like sometimes I kind of hold it like, like I'm with, similar. I with, hold it with between two fingers, my, two, my thumb and my sometimes, index finger. Uh, and I, I smoke know. it like a cigarette. I yeah, used to smoke cigarettes, so I think I kind of just fell in. Mine that. is like a two finger. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's a great. You know something? Sometimes being the experienced smoker, whatever that is. I think that's a great question. I really mm. do. I think there is no question. right or wrong way. Right. Honestly, I've never even thought about it. I just kind of here's my suggestion. Yeah. Watch no Scarface problem. and The do Sopranos, the and do the <laughs> and do exactly how they hold it. Mm. If you want to be gangster, I guess it's all dependent on the. Yeah. You gotta be gangster. You gotta be gangster. But you know something though. Go back to what he's saying. Now, now do you find yourself, Tim? Would you I'm just uh, now? That's a like a fifty six, right? Yep. Okay. Now, if you had a Corona, would you hold it the same way? I'm just I'm just curious. No. See what I mean? No. So let's go yeah. back. Go back. There's the Corona's there's the point. a much smaller sky. Probably hold it more like and a cigarette. And that's the point. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the point that Matt, Matt is, trying, is trying to make. Yeah. So depending on the size of the cigar, there you go. Here's the answer. Hold it so that you don't drop it. <laughs> it's like really I'm screwed. Yeah. <laughs> don't pull. And that Paul. it feels comfortable to you. Don't yeah. pull, yeah, right, Paul. Right? That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. So when do you take the band off? If you take it off before you light the cigar, how do you do it without damaging the wrapper? So. I personally take the band off when I get to it, where the burn yeah. line gets close to it. Yep. Well, I think the heat, because I the really heat. do think the heat loosens up the glue. I yes, think there's does. merit to yes, that. Heat does. loosens up the glue. I, I, I too, agree with that whole hot. Now, it, here's the thing. This. You're also going to burn your fingers, though. But here's the thing. If I find this a lot with uh, torpedoes, right, or anything that has a torpedo a head on the cigar, sometimes when you're smoking it, yeah, after you cut it, you the band will kind of get on your lips when you're smoking it, and that annoys the crap out of me. So I take it off. So man. I take it off. If it comes off easily, if it doesn't come off easily, I will wait. Cause you, and even if you do wait, sometimes it damages the cigar anyway. Yeah, so and, and no, no, that's kind of my assessment. No, I mean, d- d- just to prove a point, now here's a, a seven-year-old cigar. It comes right off. Mm. So the glue yep. is somewhat... Aged out, I don't want to call it. Yeah, deteriorated. Well, Thank don't you. forget, it's been in a pretty high humidity environment for seven years. So no, the glue really. is going to... Well, not What, do you really. kept it in your pocket for seven years? No, not high humidity. 64%. You know, there's something wrong with those guys. You should give them all to me. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I well, it's, re- it's, it's not high for a cigar, but it's relatively high compared to yeah, your true. home. That's, it, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, home yeah, is like 28 to 30% during the wintertime yeah. in New England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. So that glue's going to break. I tell down. you what, good question. I have um, these so, what are some things to look for when finding a local cigar shop to go to? How do you tell if it's a good shop or not? This is the best question out of the email that yeah. I thought. I, I agree. And and I would ask. I would. I would one, go back. One to that a, this man does not work at because he's <laughs> he's asshole. not going to share the good <laughs> yeah. stuff with you. Um, he's going to say I'm all out of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you. I'll answer that question is. Is take a look at the selection and and what the, how how they're humidifying that cigar. What I'm trying to get at is you'll see some. Um, I, I've been in so many different stores. They'll have almost like a vaporizer 
uh, that you would put in the room for your your, your son and daughter who's young with, with menthol in it. And I'm yeah. saying, well, yeah, Al's got it. Yeah, right. It's, uh, the Cigar Oasis is is I think everyone's familiar with that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, the nuance. So taking a look. First thing I would look at is how the cigars are humidified. Mm. If it's two counters, three counters, four counters, it doesn't matter because if you're doing it to one, you're going to do all of it. The unification system that well, how they're keeping those cigars stored. That's, that's, the, first thing I'm, that's well, the first I, thing I'm looking at. The other, th- the other thing that I uh, will go back to and tell a quick story about, well, I already told it, actually. I'm not going to tell it again. When I first went to jo- uh, doc- Dr. J's. Joyles. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Joyles. J's. Uh, <laughs> Philadelphia can't get out of here. <laughs> uh, it was, I enjoy the guy behind the counter that's going to ask you what you like to smoke. Yep. He's not going to just shove what's new. Yeah down your throat because it's new and it's hot and he needs to get it off his shelf. Yeah. He's going to sell you what he estimates would be a good fit for what your palate. I agree. Fits. The right shop is the one you walk in and you say, yep. I'm looking for recommendations and they're going to ask you what you like to smoke. Right. If you say, well, I'm new and to smoking. And they're polite and they're friendly but and it, they're helpful. And if you, yeah. Exactly. And yeah. that's the most but important. But point. And I would also that's, say. That's a secondary situation. Yeah, but I would also say if they're not asking, if say you say, well, I don't really smoke cigars that often. They ask you maybe what you like to drink or what you like to eat. This, that, can you know, also play into it. And when I, you know, it was funny like that. If someone new I'd never seen before, I'll ask them. The, sec- the, the question I ask them is, what do you normally smoke? And then they say, well, this is my first time. The, the question I ask them, do you, have you smoked cigarettes before? Yeah. Because a cigarette smoker can handle a stronger body. Cigar, yeah. Yeah. So then I'll ask them, what are you but looking you know, for it, in a cigar? It's funny, ATL in the, in the chat room says, you know, when the guy asks you what you like to eat or drink. You know, mm-hmm. What's I mean, up, Adam? It, it, speaks to your, it speaks to your palate. Now, I went through this last weekend because I went to a local brick and mortar in my hometown. And the gentleman oh, behind man. the counter. Was, <laughs> Tim, Tim walked in and the first time and was like, Do you know who I am? I'm Tim from the Stogie Geeks, no, bitch. No, no, no. <laughs> no, <it's>, no. <laughs> it was the first time I had the opportunity to go to the local shop in a, in a while. You guys know why. <clears throat> I walked in. <laughs> the, guy, recognized. the guy behind the counter was watching TV <laughs> as we'll usual. Check and there's an old couple in the humidor, the walking humidor, trying to buy cigars for their son as a gift. And they had no clue what he liked. So here I am asking him these questions. What does he like to eat? What does he like to drink? Meanwhile, the shopkeeper is behind the counter watching TV. Mm-hmm. And uh, to me, that is not a shop that no. I would want to revisit. Go to- I, I, I mean, to take that another step, excuse me, Tim, is that all, I, I call it the gawker behind the counter not the person buying yeah watching you the whole time as you're going i mean you can go both ends of the spectrum yeah. can i help you and you you look you're following that person from cabinet to cabinet this is that's the same that shot that has signs every two feet in the humor that says oh. keep your hands out of the pockets that's the time to screw and it's it's just not a good shop no. i mean no but they, they, i tell you what not to say they don't I have good cigars great, great they do segment. have good cigars but great segment um <laughs> And what's this gentleman's name again? Uh, Matt. Matt. I, I, I tell you what. Great points. Anyways, um, I digress. So, anyway. yeah, local shop. You want someone, I think Tim kind of summarize it nicely, someone that's uh, going to give you a pleasant retail experience, yep. going to yep. ask you the right questions that we've He's talked right. about. Also, I think, the closing note on this particular topic, not someone that's going to follow you around so exactly. much and, and crowd you, too. We've talked the about stalker. this on the show before. Yeah, yeah, the stalker's a bad thing. Um so he also asked, for someone that just wants to try out cigar smoking, how do you store, how to, how do, he missed the U, but how do you store your cigars in a good way without having to spend money on a humidor initially in case you decide you don't like okay. it? Great question. This okay. is, this great is a question. great Phenomenal. question and an easy answer. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, what I would tell the person is that if you're looking at 10 to 15 to 20 cigars, Go get a, I mean, not going crazy. Go get one of the Bovita uh, yep. uh, um, elements that they, they can go for. Bovita like, packs, we packs, call them. We can go yeah, yeah. from a 10 to a 20, whatever, and go B- get a couple of them. B-O-V-E-D-A. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll cost you $4 for one of yep. these. Yep. So. Exactly. And then buy a good Tupperware, one of the yeah, ones the that has like a rubber gold seal. Seal. Or, or it, and it clicks. Right? Or, a, or a Ziploc bag. Uh, yeah, exactly. It did a Ziploc bag. A um, Ziploc bag and a Bovita is the best Best Initial way, smoker humidor but, ever. And, one, and Matt, to go one step further, and I'm not trying to, again, he's asking a beginning question. Don't go home with that and put it uh, next to a heating element. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you're putting it right near a. You want a cool, dark place yeah. where the sun is not being down mm-hmm. on it. And I do this. I have a piece of Tupperware. You guys have seen it, the red piece of Tupperware mm-hmm. where I keep excess that people send us for Stogie Geeks 
with a couple Bravita packs in, mm-hmm. and I keep it in a cool dock place. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, I've and had they those, stay fine. Yeah. I've had those Bravita packs for six months, and they're still fine. Yeah, right. And I'm not because I very rarely open it, and mm-hmm. I know I don't need to worry about. There the you go. That's it's okay. Perfect. What's the next question? You know, so. <laughs> Uh, so he said, I'm sure there are other questions, blah, blah, blah. That was it for the questions. No, great. Hey, great segment. I mean, I think another point that I could, uh, relate from my experience coming into it was is slow down Mm -hmm. when you're smoking a cigar, just slow down. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. Take some time between your, 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 your your inhales and, and because the cigar will get hot, it'll get soft. Mm -hmm. You may get tar coming out of the end and that will ruin the experience. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. So slow down. I'd add that as number six on my list. So I had top five rookie cigar smoker mistakes. Now, oh, one no. of the things I had in there was um, uh, number two. We'll start with number two, buying a small, cheap humidor. And I think we just covered that, right? Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people do that. They jump on a deal or whatever, mm-hmm. and they get this cheap little wooden box, and they just can never keep uh, You must see it all, <clears throat> all the time, right? They can't keep the humidity at a constant level in it. Mm-hmm. And buying a, a zip, I think if you were to get two Ziploc bags, which cost you maybe 50 One cents cent. total, yeah. right? Uh, good quality Ziploc bags, right? right? With a double was. thing, yeah. like double you were saying zipper, before, a yeah. double zipper or even the, the you know piece of plastic that zips mm-hmm. across the top. A yep. Bavita pack in each one costs you like $8. So for like less than $10, you can probably store 40 oh, all cigars, day long. All yeah. day long. All day long. And keep those in a, a mm-hmm. the right place. You know, don't put them up in your cabinet or anything, but just put them in a nice place. It doesn't get too much. If you much have sun. a drawer or something like that, it yeah. might be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you, you can always tell the, the newbie that comes in <laughs> is that when they get the wrap, the, the cigars in the cellophane, and they smell and they, and they smell it. It smells good. Mm. That that that's that's. Just don't try and sniff through the cellophane. cellophane right. Uh, Mark Jr. Your suggestion was don't smoke too fast and get your cigar too hot. Um, nice. My other one that I had on my list of top five rookie cigar smoker mistakes, buying wicked cheap cigars. I think when a lot of people get into the, um, the, uh, the hobby of, or whatever of smoking cigars, they, they really go for that low price level. But they do it in not the right way. There are ways to get inexpensive hand-rolled cigars mm-hmm. that we've covered on the show that I strongly recommend to new smokers. You know, yep. going in... And just pulling whatever is out of the jars or the bags or the bundles that are in your local shop is not the way to do it. Not to say that... And that's exactly what this older couple was doing. They were yeah. going for the three packs with a free cutter. Yeah, exactly. And they were crap cigars. Right. And I reached behind and I knew there was a box of three-year-old Capaguans yeah. sitting there that have not been touched because I'm the only one buying them at this local mm-hmm. shop because I'm the only one that knows what they are. And I said, buy two of these for them. Yep. And- because I'll tell you what... No matter what he smokes, He's gonna this like is him. a good, mm. solid smoke with three years of age on them. And it's, now, you've got online auctions, which are great. But, um, you've got closeouts, mm. which are great. The only thing about auctions, I would say, for a beginner is, is you could get trapped. You can. Yes. you got to yeah. listen to We've our segment on Cigar Auction. Yeah. But yeah. to get back to and another thing for the, the, the newbie is this. Because, again, uh, sometimes I, it happened to me many times. What was the cigar that you gave me? What I say for the newbie, uh, Matt, is that do yourself a favor, and maybe I'm being a little anal. You go in, you get the cigar. Unfortunately, with a cigar, um, it's not going to tell you the size. It's not going to tell you everything. What I, what I did in the beginning many, many years ago, I would write down the, uh, what I, what I, I would ask him what size and whatever it was, and I would write it down and keep the label yep. and make notes yep. to what it is. What was, and, and every cigar may be a Petit Robusto to a Salomon. Break that cigar down in threes. And this because what I may think behind the counter is a good cigar, that doesn't mean it's going to translate to that smoker that's right. a good cigar. Yeah. Well, thank you for the recommendation, but I didn't like this for, for what a particular reason. So keep a little diary everybody, a lot. Yeah, everybody has a size they prefer. Correct. Everybody has wrappers they prefer or, mm-hmm. or blends they prefer. So I think that's the other great piece of advice is I mean, a lot of new cigar smokers will lock into a size and or a wrapper. Yeah. And you Don't. need to just throw that out the window when you first start. Try a whole bunch of different things. Try everything. Yeah. Try everything. Yeah. Um, the other one that I had that I think is all too common is cutting too far into the head of the cigar. Yes. Especially when <laughs> that's, Especially when it's a torpedo, when you're making it into yeah, a, a, yeah. a, a Toro. <laughs> you don't, I mean, as, as you guys know, you don't want to, you, you, you cut the cap off of the guard, it's going to come unravel. That's a good segment we've got to do another time. That's, there is, <sighs> if you're using a straight cut, you really only need to take off a sliver. Yeah. Just a cap. Uh, just, Unless 
there is a draw problem. In yeah, which then you case, take off more. You take oh, off a little more, see be, if you can fix be, you it. You know something? That's something we should do for another, another segment. Because there's a, there's a right and a wrong way to cut a cigar. Yeah, so right, we say, you know, there's no it. right or wrong way to hold a cigar. There's a right and a wrong way to cut a cigar. Cut it yeah. and light it. Yeah, so, cut it and light it, too. It, it's yeah. two different things. Well, so. I think you're right. I didn't have that on my list. You know, lighting the cigar improperly is certainly... It makes a yeah, big makes difference. It makes a difference. Just the only thing I, t- I, I say to the listeners, and Matt in particular, because you, you were kind enough to, to uh, send this question out to us, do not use a, a, uh, a lighter with, with the Zippo fluid. Just, yeah. just don't yeah, do that. Very yeah, bad. So anyway. Yeah. They um, taste gross. Pairing, oh. pairing drinks with cigars that ruin the experience. Yeah. Now there's a lot kind of, of like what I did today. Well, no, <laughs> no, and your experience, right? <laughs> I've been smoking for years. And I still did it. Yeah. Well, still it, make mistakes. Get, you know, Scotch, rum, and whiskey, whatever. There's a lot of nuances there. Yeah. But what Scotch I'm saying is, is tough. It, again, it can you know, be, yeah, some yeah. cigars you may like to pair with coffee. Some you may like to pair with Scotch, and that's one thing. There are some drinks that I'm sorry. There's a right and a wrong here. You IPA should, beer. You should IPA just beer. never pair. IPA beer in orange juice oh, with a cigar. Yeah. Orange juice right right out the window. Yeah. Never oh, pair. Did you see that in a magazine? Where yeah, I did. A, yeah. yeah. That's, okay. what, that's what reminded me of this was uh, Camacho's running yeah. uh, an yeah, ad yeah, campaign. Yeah, they kill him. They're like Mr. Cigar. And his oh, slogan oh, yeah. for Mr. Cigar is, I love thank to pair you. all my cigars with orange juice. Um, okay, please, thank really? you. Oh, um, but oh, it's a pun. I got to show it's you a, that, It's a, it's yeah, a marketing yeah, but, campaign. But he, he, yeah. Whatever. So. Anyway. Um, the last thing I had here on my list uh, for top five rookie mistakes cigar smokers make ashing too often. Now, we all poke fun at the way we drop ashes all over ourselves. Yeah. And it seems cigar said, smokers ben know. Said his, ben said it best to us a couple of years ago. What did he say? Let the ash fall where it may. Exactly. No, I, I got to know. Your ash is your ash. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It all comes out the same thing. If it's on the floor, whatever, don't knock it off. Let it fall on its own. Paul, yeah. why? Why, though? Well, I think that it gets too hot point. if you're ashing too yes. often. That's and that's right. going to ruin your, your, your um, The experience. ash will insulate yeah. the, the burn and the heat. It mm. will help it not from becoming too hot. Now, mm. if it becomes too hot, it's going to become bitter. Now, having oh. said that, so I went through some of my clothing. I like to uh, donate my clothing, especially before Christmas time, because as much as you don't ask for sweaters and crap from the family members... You get sweaters and crap for Christmas from the family members, so I like to do a purge right before Christmas. I'm going through my shirt. There's Tan- a lot of burn marks in a lot of my clothing, right? Because you let the ash fall. Stogie where- Santa got Mark Jr. and I Cubans, but he got you a sweater. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. And it already, had burn, it, it already had burn holes in it, too, which is funny. You get three dogs, you'll get Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's it's great. Yeah, point. don't ask too often. And, and 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 a closing note is that each cigar and its size has its own little drawer pattern. And what I mean by that, I don't I don't I don't smoke six by sixties. Doesn't mean that it that you shouldn't. I don't want to put that across. Well, you have it. You're smoking a Lancero as opposed to a Robusto. Um, there, there, it's you more really of a, have to slow down. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's a yeah. great point that Mark said at the beginning of the segment, middle of wherever it was. Is I, 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 if you go back to that, if everything that was in here, I, I guess we could pick out our own little nuances, what's most important. Slow down and enjoy yep. that smoke because a Lancero is going to smoke, it's a finesse smoke. It's not a, you know, if you watch, you, you I think that's why a lot of people don't like Lanceros. Right. They don't know and how they to smoke go it. towards the six by sixties because they just stick them in their mouth and they yeah. rail away mm-hmm. at the thing, you know, and it's, yeah, I, I tell you, Matt, thank you very much for those questions. Yeah, I thank you very much, that. Matt. Yeah, exactly. uh, that concludes this segment for the show and rounds out this episode of the Story Oh, no, Geeks. no, 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 we no, have no, no, it doesn't. We have a reveal and a question. Yes. A reveal and a question. Let's go with the question first. I get a nice caramel uh, flavor from my cigar, but we'll, we'll come back Look to that. Look at the ash for that. Let's, uh, let's go for the uh, the question. What is the question? You got a the... nice ash, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looky, but don't touchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, that you've, been, you've, been, you've been playing frisbee with me all night. Uh, I mean, come on. Yeah. Stay away from okay, my ass. What's our question? The question. What is the question? I don't want to make that. That's come on, difficult. man. You had a good one. Uh, and that's though, since we're going on here. Uh, he had a, he started with El, El Credo was his first uh, marketing of cigars. And that's when Lagoria Cabana came out. He sold that cigar or that line to what um what per, or what what uh, was what company 
So his first line of cigars was what now? El Credo. Uh, it's El Credo? C- I'm, I'm killing I'm not a very good pronunciation of words. C-R-E-D-I-T-O, I believe. Yep. And he Credito. sold yeah, El Credito, right. And he sold that. That was his initial with Lagoria Cubana when back in the... In, in, you this is prior to La Gloria Cubana? Oh, well, no, right at La, La Gloria Cubana. And, and back in the uh, mid-'80s and whatever, getting La, La Gloria Cubanas was not the easiest thing to do. He sold that company to who? Okay. All right. That's the question. So if it's, it's somebody don't get the answer. El Carrito. Oh, El Carrito. Thank you. And he sold that. He sold the Cerrito. rights. Yeah. He Cerrito. sold the rights Cerrito. of that company to who? So okay, how's that's that? the question. Send it to stoegeeks at gmail.com. First person to come in with an email answer gets the fabulous EP Carrillo Cardinal four pack. That's two Sumatra and two Maduro cigars. Yeah. We'll throw in some stickers too. So. Yeah, and we'll throw in some and stickers. And what's our too, reveal? Though. Yeah, what am I smoking that has a nice caramel flavor? I'm very much enjoying so, it. So I give know. us an honest estimation. Do you like it or not? Oh, I do like it. How much? Uh, very much so, actually. It's very okay. smooth. It's got a nice, nice caramel sweetness to it. Rate it, rate it, rate it, rate it. Rate it, right. No, I, well, I'm only a third oh. of the way into it. Okay, I mean, would you call it a definite fiver at this point? Yeah, I would call it a fiver. That is the LFD number three. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty psyched because I got one in my bag, too. So. So, so what is the LFD number three? For? Limitado number three. Oh. Oh. I don't number three. <laughs> really? so now, how, when did that come out? Oh, I was about three years, years ago. Uh, yeah. At least a minimum, because a five's out now, so two years ago. Nice. Eh, I'm not going to math, but three from five equals two. So um, I, those are smoking at a primo, primo situation. Nice. I love that cigar. Yeah, and the first third is very consistent oh, with the one is. that I smoked. It really is. Yeah. So, so we, we, why we did this on a closing note, Thank you, Charlie. Paul, Paul turned around and had a not such a Can't good move. experience on the first one, and again, uh, always smoke more than one or whatever cigar you're smoking to get a good really fix on what you're looking. doing. So it, it's yeah, a I, have to, I have to say, honestly, on Bandit, I'm enjoying it a lot more than when right. than the one that I smoked before. Excuse me. So yeah. you got me. All right. You got me. All right, that's fine. So thank <laughs> gotcha. you very much. All right. Gotcha. Okay, don't forget, CRA, baby. Keep our rights going. Sign up for the CRA. And join your forums. Thanks, Great everyone. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>